I'm joined now by Colonel Lee Ellis, U.S. Air Force retired, and he's written the book Leading with Honor. It's leadership lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, and he's got a B.A. in history, M.S. in counseling and human development, graduate of the Armed Forces Staff College and the Air War College, and unfortunately, he spent some time as a POW in Vietnam. He's joining us now on the program. Colonel Ellis, how are you this morning? Good morning, Greg. Doing great. Thank you. Hey, we appreciate your time. First, you know, for for people like me that we've read about what happened in Vietnam, uh, could not even imagine what it was really like. How did you survive years as a POW in Vietnam? How do you do that? Well, I think you do it like you do anything else. You do it one day at a time. And, uh, you know, you have to have strong faith, I think, faith that you will survive and believe that someday you'll walk out of there. Someday you're going to get well if you've got cancer. You have to believe that. Uh, we had great leadership. Uh, and, of course, back to the faith, you know, strong faith in God, faith in my country that they wouldn't just leave us there. That eventually they were going to get us out. Faith in my teammates and the leaders and the leadership that we had was fantastic and made all the difference in the world. Well, that's a, just a great comment on, on all all points that you hit there. But one thing that jumped out at me is when you said faith that, that we'd come get you. Um you know, and and I I don't know if you even want to talk about this, but it just made me think about Benghazi and the the, the people there that were waiting for us to come get them. And eight hours later, our, our guys are dying on the roof trying to defend the CIA annex. What, what do you think we could have done something? I, I mean, I feel like we let them down there for sure. Well, it seems kind of uncharacteristic, doesn't it? Uh, the way we typically operate. So it, it does make me wonder. It makes me concerned that we didn't respond uh, quicker, faster, better or even respond at all, I guess, was the biggest concern. So, yes, I have real concerns about that. I'm disappointed about it. I think most people are. Uh, You know, that's the one thing. The military person has to believe that your country's not going to let you down. Right. If you work or if you're a citizen of this country, you you need to be able to believe that your country's not going to let you down when you're in in a tough situation. I mean, we've... We've rescued people around the world. We've come to the aid of the hijacked ships uh, where the pirates have taken over. So, you know, we have a history of doing the right thing to stand up for the right wherever we can. And when uh, it's in our national interest, and certainly uh, there have been a lot of things that have been in our national interest lately, some others may be more debatable. Yeah, we're talking with Colonel Lee Ellis, retired here, uh, leading with honor, leadership lessons from the Hanoi Hilton on the KCMO Morning Show. And you said... You know, you've got 14 leadership principles in this book. You feel like, unfortunately, a lot of our politicians and, and maybe some of our leaders of industry and, and leaders of the community um, don't seem to be living up to that title of leader. Tell, tell us what you learned in the Hanoi Hilton on leadership and, and what you're not seeing today. Well, I think there are a couple of things. One is I think leaders have to go first into the difficult situations. Uh, they have to make difficult choices. They have to be willing to and courageous enough to make difficult choices, it takes a lot of courage. I think that's the most important thing because leaders make difficult decisions. They make unpopular decisions sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're the ones that have to gather all the information, get the good counsel typically, and then make a decision that we're all going to go execute. We're going to live with. We're committed to it. Uh, I thought about, uh, you know, World War II when President Roosevelt made the decision to attack Tokyo with Billy, um, Jimmy Doodle and his raiders, you know, they had no real hope of making any difference there. They didn't carry enough bombs hardly to, you know, cause a, a problem. But psychologically, it was a huge blow to Japan, and it was a huge morale booster for the U.S. But that was a very courageous decision, and it wasn't necessarily, uh, from a military standpoint, it wasn't the kind that you might pick out to go execute. So I think that's something to, to realize, that leaders face difficult decisions but they should be held accountable for those decisions, and that's what we're not seeing. We're not seeing leaders make some of those hard calls, and I mean in every area of society, hard calls often just to do the right thing. You know, we've seen this with education. We've seen it in business. Sometimes we see it in the government where people are ducking the hard decisions to do the right thing. Yeah, Colonel Lee Ellis here with us, retired on the KCM Morning Show. Leading with Honor is the name of the book, and... I, I like that, making the hard call, no doubt about it. And I think part of sometimes what's left out, though, of making the hard call is 
when you do that to get the people behind you to truly lead, if you're a leader, then you have to explain to them why it is the right thing, don't you? I mean, you have to educate the people. Look, I know this is tough. I know this doesn't look right, but let me tell you why we need to do this. Well, that's one of the big chapters of the whole message of my book is you have to communicate and over-communicate in order to get clarity about what it is we're doing and why we're doing it. And especially more than ever, I think leaders need to be focused uh, on having a clear strategy, but more importantly, communicating the why behind that as well as the how. Why are we doing it? How are we going to go do it? And you have to over-communicate that. You have to repeat it over and over till everybody really understands why we're doing it and what we're doing. And that clarity is so important, Greg. I'll just tell you, as a leadership uh, coach and trainer and consultant, getting clarity, leaders often assume that everybody sees the world they do right. the way they do, but they don't. And so you have to over-explain it usually to get the message out. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Colonel Lee Ellis with us here, retired, leading with honor, the name of the book. Um, let's talk about leadership here in our in our country. President Obama right now, his approval rating hovers around 40 percent, according to CNN. Mm-hmm. That's the last poll I saw. How would you rate his leadership? Well, if I start rating his leadership, it'd sound real probably political, and I don't want to be political in this. I think it's, I'll just say this, I think it's difficult to lead any organization, especially a large organization. And then when you start talking about leading a country with different worldviews, uh, population, you know, we have two parties that have different, uh, ideologies about business and about role of government and so on and about international affairs. It makes it very hard to lead. I think what you have to do in those situations is you have to come up with uh, a strategy, a plan, and you have to be real clear about it. What, what's underneath that? What are your values that are you using to base that decision on? And you have to sell that, but then you have to make a clear decision and go execute it. And I would say that President Obama has at times been hesitant to um, clarify what his strategy is and why it is his strategy, and I think that's undermined his leadership, his hesitancy to listen to the experts at times in certain areas, uh, and then make a clear decision, explain it, and then go execute it and own it rather than worry about what other people are thinking and what, you know, how it's going to impact him politically. Right. Uh, that's where the courage is going to have to come in for him and all leaders is how can I do this thing that I believe is right for the country and not worry about how it's going to affect the 2014 or the 2016 elections. Yeah, and that's unfortunately what it seems like all our politicians care about. Uh, Last question I wanted to ask you, though. Mm -hmm. I agree you don't want to be ruled by the polls. However, you Mm -hmm. are supposed to be a representative of the people when you're you're a politician. So at what point do you need to listen to the people who say, no, listen, we've heard what you said. We disagree. We think what you're doing is the wrong thing. We're the ones who put you there. You need to rethink what you're doing. Well, I think you usually go against the... common opinion when you know something they don't know. In other words, your knowledge is at a higher level. You can see further around the corner because of the intelligence information, and you see what the strategy is that's needed for the country. So in what you're saying and what to do that and to make that kind of decision, you have to decide that the general people don't know enough to really understand what's going on here. But you still have to be very cautious because, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of wisdom in common sense. And when you're going against a common view of the people, uh, you, your risk rate is much higher, and you better be right. Yeah, you have to, gu- you have to guard against arrogance and thinking that you are yeah. so much smarter than everybody else that you know what's right, right and they're stupid. Exactly. Yeah. And I know in this country in World War II, there are a lot of people that didn't even want to go to war. Uh, that's one reason England stayed out so long was people had suffered so much in World War One, sure. they didn't want to get involved again. And, of course, my, uh, the Prime Minister Chamberlain, uh, he was very much against the war, not because he was a pacifist, but he was just was didn't want to get involved in the war because of the cost in money and manpower, and he was just unwilling to uh, look straight in the eye to what Hitler was doing. He turned his head to what Hitler was doing because he didn't have the courage to take him on. Good stuff. It's called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. Colonel Lee Ellis retired. Uh, they can get it now on uh, Amazon.com and all the bookstores, right? 
That's right. Sure can. Fantastic. Hey, thanks for being with us today. We wish you all the best. Thank you, Greg. Have a great one.